Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at this integral, uh, the integral from zero to two pi of the natural log of one plus sine x dx. And we're gonna utilize this fact, which is known as King's property. King's property. Oh, property. Uh, sorry. King's property, there we go. Uh, I've gone over this before, very easy to prove with a substitution. Uh, just let, you know, either this equal this or this equal this, uh, perform the substitution and, uh, you know, it's, it's true. Um, all right. So where do we start? I think the, uh, the place to start on this integral is here. What we're going to do is split it up into two separate integrals, giving us I is equal to the integral from zero to two pi of the natural log of one plus sine x x plus the integral from, oh, I'm sorry, this should go from 0 to pi, and then from pi to 2 pi of the natural log of 1 plus sine x dx. All right, well, uh, why did I do that? Well, so we can change this one um, to look more like this one. Uh, you should perform a u substitution on this where uh, u is equal to um, x minus pi, but I'm just going to be using a trick where you just subtract a certain amount from uh, the interval, and then you just need to add that same amount to all the x's inside your integral. So that will give us i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1, plus sine x dx plus the integral from 0 to pi of, well, let's see, I subtracted pi from the interval, so I need to add it to that x. So that's going to be the natural log of 1 plus sine of x plus pi. What is sine of x plus pi? Sine starts here, goes down, so a shift to the left, pi units, I'm sorry, it starts here, goes up, and then down. So shifting, that would give us negative sine. Uh, all right, so that would be the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of 1 minus sine x dx. Okay, so now we broke them apart. Now we're going to put them back together, giving us i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of, since we added our integrals together, we're multiplying the things inside the natural log together. That's going to give us 1 minus sine squared x or cosine squared x. Now, it might be tempting here to use the properties of logarithms again to bring that 2 outside. Um, you really shouldn't do that because then you have two times the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of cosine x. And uh, on the interval 0 to pi, uh, the cosine function is not always positive. Um, and you don't want to take the natural log of negative numbers, um, usually. Uh, so we're going to leave it like this. And then we are going to break this up like we did before on this one. So we're going to say that i is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of cosine squared x dx plus the integral from, I'm sorry, pi over 2 to pi of the natural log of the cosine squared x dx. And then we will subtract pi over 2 from the interval and add it to the integrand. So that will be, let's see, 0 to pi over 2. Let's see, cosine of x plus pi over 2. Cosine, and then you shift it, so that would be negative sine x, but we're squaring it, so that's just going to be sine squared x.
Right. That makes sense, right? Because we originally had the integral from zero to pi over two of this plus the integral from pi over two to pi of that. We subtracted pi over two from the interval, meaning we had to add it onto our x. It was, this was originally a cosine squared x, which became a cosine squared of x plus pi over two. In other words, si uh, negative sine x squared, which is just sine squared x. Okay, now we can utilize King's property um, to show that the integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of cosine squared x dx is equal to the integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of sine squared x dx. Because if you, uh, this would become the integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of cosine squared of pi over two minus x. Cosine of pi over two minus x is sine x, then you square it to get sine squared x. Again, I'll go over that one more time. We're trying to say that these two things are equal. And they are, because utilizing King's property, this one becomes the integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of, natural log of cosine squared of zero plus pi over two minus x. In other words, pi over two minus x uh, in other words, sine x, then you square it. So these two things are equal. So we can just say that it's equal to two of one of them. And now you'll notice that we have the interval from zero to pi over two. And on zero to pi over two, the cosine function is never negative. So we can bring this two out safely now. So i is equal to 4 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of cosine x. Well, that looks a little bit better than where we started, but let's just go ahead and label this integral j, giving us i is equal to 4j. Now, we just need to solve for, we just need to figure out what j is. All right. Well, if j is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of cosine x dx, then it is also equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine x dx, using King's property. Because the integral, if you applied King's property to this, again, you would get the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of cosine of pi over 2 minus x. Cosine of pi over 2 minus x is sine x. So... Um, j is not only equal to this, it is also equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine x dx. So, that would give us 2j is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of this plus this when King's property is applied to it. In other words, Cosine x times oops, cosine x times sine x. I hope you're all following this. Okie dokie. Well, this looks even worse than this. But um, what we can do is just put a 2 in there and then subtract the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of... Or, well, we can subtract, yeah, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log 2 dx. And this is just pi natural log 2 over 2. Okay. And the reason I put that 2 there to begin with was because now this just becomes sine 2x. Make the substitution u equals 2x, giving us uh, uh, 
dx equal um, du over 2. So 2j is equal to the integral from 0 to pi. That's our change of bounds because u is equal to 2x. Then we would have uh, natural log u. dx becomes du over 2. That's not natural log u, natural log sine u, sorry. Natural log sine u, du. All right, did I do that right? u is equal to 2x, so our bounds change from 0 to pi instead of 0 to 2 pi. This 2x becomes a u, this dx becomes a du over 2, so that's right. But we still need this minus pi natural log 2 over 2. Okay. Well, now we're going to have to split this one up into the integral from 0 to pi over 2 plus the integral from pi over 2 to pi. So let's erase some stuff over here. We don't need this anymore, I don't believe. We already know that i is equal to 4j, and we're working on j right now. So once we find j, we just multiply it by 4. all of this. All right, we're breaking this up into two separate integrals. So, 2 times j is equal to 1 half the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine u du plus the integral from pi over 2 to pi of the natural log of the same thing. And then, of course, we have the minus pi natural log 2 over 2. This is all one line. All right. Did I do that right? I did not. One half. Right? Because this one half applies to this whole thing. Okay, so, all right, let's just revisit an old trick that we've already done in this video. We're going to subtract pi over 2 from the interval and add it to that u inside the integral. So this would become 0 to pi over 2. And then we would have sine u plus pi over 2. Well, that would be cosine u. Well, we've already shown that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of sine u du is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the natural log of uh, cosine u du. In other words, these two things, this and this, are the same thing. So it's just two times one of them. So, we can just get rid of that one half and erase this entire half right here. So, uh, ah, yeah. Then, of course. We would bring this minus pi natural log 2 up here to make it one line. All right. Well, don't forget, j is this thing right here, and we know that this is the same as this. Um, so, in other words, j is equal to, or I'm sorry, 2j is equal to j minus pi natural log 2 over 2. Subtracting j from both sides, we just get that j is equal to negative pi natural log 2 over 2. But we know that i is equal to 4 times that. So i is equal to 4 times this thing. In other words, negative 2 pi natural log 2. 
And that is it. All right, maybe next time I'll try to solve that one using Feynman integration, but for now, hope you enjoyed that.